Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I want to do a quick video on uh, rendering with a camera and uh, placing an image behind your render in order to make it look a little bit more realistic. So rather than just rendering in you know, your reset view, which is going to the top and going to the bottom right corner, that's just an isometric view, what I want to do is I want to put a sky back here and I want to set up a camera pointing up at the house uh, or up at the garage in order to show that, okay? So the first thing you're going to do here is you're going to set up a camera, all right? Um, think about where you would be standing if you were standing there and shooting with a camera. So if I wanted to get pretty much the same angle so I can see both sides, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a line and come across somewhere in the middle of this garage here, okay? And then I'm going to move up uh, probably about five feet six because if you were about six feet tall, maybe five feet eight, if you were six feet tall, your eyeballs would be about five feet eight, okay, uh, off the ground. So now you would type cam, you put your camera at the end of that line, and you point the camera now at what you want to see. So let's just say I click this corner here, and then I go ahead, it's going to ask me a couple questions at the bottom. Do you want to name it? Do you want to change the location? Do you want to change the height um, of the camera? Do you want to change the target or the lens? None of these things are anything I would change at first because I don't really know what the camera looks like yet. So you would just go ahead and hit enter. Okay. Now, if I click on the camera, you'll see a little preview of the camera, and that's going to show you what you're actually looking at. You can see that the lens, the lens length is a little bit too high because we can't see the entire garage. So if you hit escape, click on the camera again, go out into a blank area and do a right click and hit properties, we can see that the lens length is at 50. So let's change that to about 25. The bigger that number is, the further you are in uh, zoomed, and the smaller that number is, the further out you're zoomed, okay, and the wider field of range that you'll see. Um, you can also change the field of view, but I don't think we really need to because you can see in the preview now that I'm seeing pretty much everything that I want to see, okay? So I'm going to close that preview. I'm going to show you how to get into that view. You go to view. You drop down model views, double click camera, hit apply, and hit OK. Now you can see that there's a lot of nothing behind this image here, and if I go to render this, um, it's going to actually render pitch black. So let's just do that real quick. Even though I'm going to be dropping frames here as I'm trying to render, um, I think it's important to show this. If I go to visualize and I do a quick medium render, um, I'll do it on like 1280 by 1024, and I hit render. Give that a second to start up you'll see that it's pitch black back here. It's a nice view, and I could probably zoom in a little further, but you get that pitch black, okay? So now, in order to get back to my view here, I'm gonna zoom out, I'm gonna right click on this, and hit parallel, and I'm gonna bring my view back, I'm gonna click on the camera, do a right click properties, and maybe I'll change that lens length to about 32 or something like that, okay? And then close. It looks like everything's centered correctly. If it wasn't, I'd be moving this point um, around to try to get that centered, but that's fine. Okay, so now this is how we put the image in the back. If you go to Google Chrome, okay, or whatever browser you're using, and you type in sky, and then you go to images, and you go to tools, and you go to size large, okay, you want to find an image that is a sky that has a pretty good uh, resolution. So 1920 by 960, I'd go a little bit bigger than that. This is a good one right here, uh, 4928 by 3120. That's how many pixels. So that should look pretty clear. So do a right click, save image as, save that somewhere like on your documents, I guess. Um, save it as sky, and then hit save. It's a JPEG image. In AutoCAD, if you go to the front view, you need to be in a flat view to do this. You're gonna go to insert, attach. You're gonna find that image in your documents. Okay, so let's see if we can find that. Where did that image go? All image files, that should be under here. City, hang on. All right, let's try another one. This was happening earlier with that same sky image. So I wanna find another one that has a pretty good resolution here. Um, that one's pretty good, 2144 by 1424. Right click, save image as. 
Save that under your documents. Blue skies, that's fine. Hit save. All right, back to AutoCAD. Insert attach. Find your image, blue skies. You can just hit OK here. And then click and drag it out roughly how big you think that sky image should be. I think the, the not the bigger the better, but somewhere probably about four or five times bigger than the garage itself. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go back to the top view. Let's go to 2D wireframe to do this. And you're going to change like this. And what I like to do is I like to draw lines off of my back here. So I'm going to go out on the green line. I'm going to go uh, out on the green line this way. I'm going to come back on the green line this way. And there's really no set distance for this. It's just that I want to get this line and then I no longer need these. That diagonal line is where I'm going to put that image based on where my camera is shooting. Okay. I'm also going to take that line and I'm going to move it down a little bit because it's at this, it was pretty much at the zero plane, but I want it to be a little bit lower than um, my actual, uh, like my grass and my driveway and all that stuff. So we'll move that down a little bit, probably by about 10 feet. And now here's what you do. You go to align, you select what you want to align and you hit enter. You click the first source, which is the point that I want to move. You say where you want that point to go, so that's the destination. You click your second point, second destination, and then you click um, the third point, which is going to be the top left corner. And if you go here and just slide up, we can say that we want it to be somewhere up there. Okay, so now that's three different points that we did. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the camera again. We can see that that image is not big enough. Okay, so I'm going to take that image and scale it. I'm going to go from the bottom left corner and I'm going to try to scale this like five times. And now we're going to look at that camera again and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's pretty good, um, but I got to move it over to the left. Okay, so now we're taking that image. We're using the move tool. Oop, that's a line. Take that image, move it over. something like that and then bring it a little closer again and now let's go to view and see what it looks like in there um, model views hang on where's my camera oh somehow my camera got erased so let's go back to that cam I think I was pointed right about there hit enter I'm gonna change my camera length again make that about 32 close Okay, so now view, double click camera, hit apply, hit okay. So that's pretty good. Let's go to realistic to see what that looks like. That's not bad. I'm seeing some gray down here, so I'm actually gonna wanna move that image down a little bit. So click anywhere. Uh, you know what, let's go back, control Z. It's probably easier to do it in this view here. Moving down, I don't know, let's go another 20 feet and see if that helps. View, double click camera, hit apply, hit OK. Go to realistic and you can see that that looks pretty good. Okay, so you can pretty much do that with anything when you're trying to drop a little backdrop behind um, any 3D model that you've done because it's going to make it look a lot more realistic. So let's see what that looks like when we render it. Uh, make sure that full shadows is on. Make sure that your exposure, especially in 2019 and 2020, is set between 5 and 6. You know, somewhere around 6 is fine sun location based on the way that we drew this we drew this uh this model here which is another project that i have on my channel we drew this from the uh, right side and then the garage doors are on the front side so we want this side and this side to be pretty much in the morning hours you can see that both those sides light up a little bit and then i think everything else is good we're going to change to a high render at 1920 by 1080 and hit render and you can see that that makes it look a lot more realistic okay so that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show in this video. That's how you would attach an image and place it behind a 3D model. Um, I've done this before for many things. Like we've done a 3D model of a camera and on the camera would be on a table. And on the table, I put different images uh, that I attached that make it look like they were actually images that got printed from the camera. So I wish I had to show that as an example, but I, don't, I currently don't know really where that is. Um, but you know, this is, this is pretty cool stuff that makes it look a lot more realistic. The camera view is going to change the, the entire perspective of the drawing. All right. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Gotta catch